Good evening, sisters and brothers, and um, welcome to our evening prayer this evening, this Monday evening, the hottest day of the year, we are told, here in the UK. And um, sun is going down, and I've been outside. I love the outdoors, so despite the hay fever, I've been enjoying the outside today, doing my reading and my writing in the garden. It's been, it's been beautiful. Anyway, we come to the end of this hot day, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> as the sun is going down, we want to wind down for the day, as it were, just uh, to be grateful to God for this day and to seek the rest and, and uh, peace that only God can bring, that only God can give into our lives this night. Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. So let's come. Let's come to him tonight. He's invited us to come. So let's come and receive his rest physical rest mental rest and of course as we come to Jesus we are promised eternal rest as well and so let's let's pray our evening prayer O oh God make speed to save us O oh Lord make haste to help us <clears throat> And um, I'll do the, the, the Magnificat tonight. Let's fix this. <clears throat> My soul rejoices in you, O God. My spirit proclaims, my soul proclaims your greatness. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant, from this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. <clears throat> he has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. And uh, just, just a moment. And our collect for this evening. Kindle in our hearts, O oh God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. And our psalm this evening is Psalm number 47. Psalm 47. Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome the great king over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, 
the pride of Jacob whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is a King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham. For the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Amen. So we sing his praises. We clap our hands and we shout for joy. For the Lord is a great king. He is greatly exalted. I'll read one of the meditation from Keller. He calls it the joy of grace. The song of the nations someday will be about how God saved the world through his grace. He chose and loved Jacob or Israel in verse 4. Not because of it, not because its people were wiser or better, but simply because he loved them. Deuteronomy 7 verse 8. So as we speak to others about God, there is no place for condescension or superiority every last one of us has been saved by grace alone and so shall all his people be the final verse in this psalm reveals an astonishing vision eventually God's people the children of Abraham will include people from every tongue tribe people and nation verse 9 this was, this was promised to Abraham in Genesis 12 and verse 3. But only in Jesus Christ, in the ultimate ascension to the greatest throne, will this truth be realized. And we get a picture of this in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. Where the whole world, where people, well, God's people, from all over the world, gather in heaven. So our prayer. Lord, we often look at some people and think that type of person would never believe the Christian faith. But to think that is to forget that no one is a Christian type. The only reason I believe or anyone believes is because of a miracle of your grace. So let me, let us tell the story, the gospel to all with confidence and with hope. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, just quickly let me blow my nose. All right, our New Testament reading this evening is <coughs> Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 9. Luke 13, 1 to 9. Very enigmatic passage, Luke 13, 1 to 9. Let's see what we can make of it. <clears throat> now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were more guilty than all others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. 
Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down, why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If then, cut it down. If not, then cut it down. All right. Um, <clears throat> there we have it. Um, a very, as I said, enigmatic passage for many. In fact, the first part is easier to understand than the parable itself. <clears throat> the, the issue is about disaster, isn't it? People ask this question all the time. Um, you know, natural disasters happen and people get killed. Hurricanes, earthquakes, volcanoes. And we say, where is God? Why does God allow such terrible things? We are living in a pandemic where people are dying as a result of a virus. And the question that many people have is, why doesn't God help us? <laughs> you know, it's strange as I say that because a lot of people ask that question, of course, don't have any time for God any other time. But anyway, that's another part of that. And so we ask these questions. And then, of course, you have innocent people who are killed by war in factions. You have children who are kidnapped in northern Nigeria. You have children starving in Eritrea or, or in, in Ethiopia because of a conflict in a place called Tigray. You have children dying and starving and, and so on in Yemen because of man-made disasters. And so you say, where is God in all this? And this is the issue. This is the issue. So you have two, two, incident, two incidents. One of them, we are told, um, Pilate, the, the, these Galileans, they were sacrificing, they were offering sacrifice in the temple, and Pilate's soldiers went in and killed them all. We are told their blood was mixed with the, the blood of the sacrifices. They were slaughtered. They were in the temple. They were offering sacrifice to God, and Pilate's soldiers came in and slaughtered them. Why did God allow that? The next incident, these 18 people were just walking about, going about their business, and a tower fell down on them and killed them all. 18 people just going about their business one day, and a tower fell and killed them. What about these people? It is, an, it is the issue about uh, senseless death, this freak accidents or uh, or um natural disaster or man-made disasters man-made cruelty against other human beings and so what to say about this now you would think that jesus would would give a an elaborate explanation of why these things happen that's what i would want that's what you would want jesus why did these Galileans die in this way? They were in the temple. They were offering sacrifices. Why did God allow these Pilate soldiers to go in and slaughter them? Why? What's the answer for, for people who are just walking and going about their business on the street and a tower falling on them, killing them? What is the response of Jesus? You know, they, 
Jesus surprises us, sisters and brothers. And it is, you know, it, it, our Lord is amazing when it comes to these matters. Well, everything, frankly. <laughs> but listen to Jesus' answer. In both cases, do you think, do you think that these Galileans were any worse sinners than anybody else? No. But I tell you, unless you repent, you too will perish. Second, do you think, do, do you think that uh, these, these people who the tower fell on were more guilty than everybody else in Jerusalem that day? No. I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will perish. A lot of things Jesus says there. Let me unpack that quickly. First thing Jesus is saying is that people who, who say it must be something they've done. It must be because they've sinned. It must be because they didn't do it right. It must be something bad in them why this happened. Jesus said, I tell you, no, no. Let's get that right, sisters and brothers, because it is very easy for terrible things to happen to people. And it's easy for us to say, oh my goodness, it must be the sins of their parents or something they've done that they shouldn't do and these bad things happen. And Jesus said, no, these bad things did not happen to these innocent people because they were more guilty or sinful than anybody else in Jerusalem or in Galilee or anywhere else in the world that day. No, it is not because of their sin, their individual sin. It's not because of their individual guilt before God why these things happen. So we need to get that right first before we get to the second point. Jesus said no, not because of their guilt, not because of their sin. But why? He didn't tell us why, but he tells us our response to this. Now, of course, you and I want to know, why did God let this happen? But Jesus doesn't answer that question. Jesus doesn't tell us why he let it happen. He says, the fact that it's happened, what is going to be my response to that situation? I am looking on and I see a terrible injustice happen, either by man, by other human beings, kidnapping in, in, in northern Nigeria, uh, you know, um, hurricanes, volcanoes, all the rest of it. Uh, what is my response going to be about this situation? Not why did God let it happen? And in a sense, I mean, uh, one theologian says, Jesus is kind of saying, not that why did God let it happen to those people, but why did God not let it happen to me? Jesus said, unless you repent, you will perish in the same way. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, sisters and brothers, that the the, the 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 problem is not the people it is not the thing that happened the problem is us the problem is our hearts and we need to be ready for any such thing to happen to us at any time you see we all we all and this tells god gets to the to the parable of the vineyard we are all here merely by the grace of God. And the fact that a tower did not fall on you today is because of the grace of God. It's not because you are any better than the ones who the tower, the tower fell on. The fact that soldiers didn't invade you and kill you today is not because you are better off than the ones whom the soldiers invaded and killed it's because of the grace of god and so live jesus says live a life of repentance live a life 
of, of recognizing that that could be you at any moment. Unless you repent, you too will perish. Unless we recognize that it wasn't, it, 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 the tower didn't fall on them because they did something wrong. The tower fell on them mainly because God's mercy protects me from that same tower. The Galileans were killed by Pilate's soldiers only because God protected me from that incident. You see, the, the point that Jesus is making, focus on why it didn't happen to you, not focus on why it happened to them. That's the wrong way to look at the picture. The fact is, you and I deserve the tower to fall on us. You and I deserve to die. But the fact that we come through another day without tower falling on us, without soldiers breaking down our doors and, and killing us, without we dying, giving us worship to God, the fact that we have made it to the end of a day, be grateful, says Jesus. And that is the point of the parable. The parable is about a second chance for a tree that is not bearing fruit. A tree that is not repentant. A tree that is not that is not living up to the standard that he should be living up to. And the gardener says, Lord, give it a second chance. Give it another day, maybe even another year before we chop it down. Sisters and brothers, this text is sober. It's a reminder to us that we are not promised tomorrow. And the fact that we get up tomorrow is the grace of God. The fact that we make it to the end of this day is purely, purely on the grace of God. So be grateful and live a life of repentance, says Jesus. Live a life recognizing your indebtedness to the grace of God. And come to him in penitence. That is is the point of this story let's pray it's a long way to get there but i got there let's pray <laughs> let's pray our father we thank you for your grace forgive us lord whenever we take your grace for granted forgive us for when we when we look at disasters and we look at this pandemic and we there are times when we wonder why these things don't happen why these things happen to some people and not to others but lord you're teaching us that's that that's not the question to ask the question to ask our hearts is why am I spared? Why am I? Why am I here? And so Lord, give me grace, give us grace to recognize your grace in our lives, your mercy, your compassion, to live a life of penitence, to live a life recognizing that we are here only by your grace we come to the end of this day only by your grace we may see tomorrow only by your grace and so lord thank you for that grace that gives us another day another year to bear fruit to live for you lord we pray so many in our world go about their business every day without ever thinking, without ever reflecting on your mercy and grace in their lives. And sometimes, Lord, it's when tragedy hits. It's when 
it's when we deal with uh, towers falling or, or man-made disasters in our lives that we are we, we stop to reflect on our on our mortality and think of the footballer who had a heart attack this weekend over on the, on, on the pitch it's a reminder to us that these things don't just happen to old people. They can happen to fit uh, young men as well. And so it's a reminder, Lord, that we are not promised anything. And everything we have is a matter of your grace. And we are grateful. And so, dear God, give us grace, we pray, to bear fruit in our lives, fruit of repentance, so that we will not, never, ever take your grace for granted. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Lord, we continue to remember our world and our community and your children tonight who might be suffering in any way. Lord, we pray for them tonight. We pray for those who are physically and mentally, emotionally uh, unwell tonight. Those who are in pain, again, physical pain in their bodies, but also emotional, mental pain, mental anguish. Lord, we pray for them tonight. Lord, grant them your mercy, your compassion, your grace, so that, Lord, your children may experience your healing touch upon their lives. Hear our prayer, Lord, for those on our prayer list in our church. And we pray for, we pray for your intervention in their lives. We ask, Lord, that you will bring hope in situations where there is despair. Bring love where there seem to be hate or indifference. Bring your grace in situations where people are suffering, where they are weak. Give them your strength. So Lord, we pray, we remember, as we mentioned, we remember people, children especially, who are, and the most vulnerable all over the world, who are suffering in Tigray, in Ethiopia, in northern Nigeria, in Yemen, in Syria, and so many other parts of our world, by man-made disaster. But those from natural disaster, the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the uh, volcano and, and so on. Lord, we pray for these people. And we continue to pray for the world as that is still affected, and even in our own country, with the Prime Minister's announcement this evening, we pray, Lord, for this, for the end of this virus and the, 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 the effectiveness of the vaccines so that, Lord, we can, our lives can return to some normalcy again. So, Lord, we bring these to you tonight and so many others that's on our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. And so our night prayer, guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may much with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, Shield the joyous and all for your love's sake. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord. And in your mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord grant you peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers, from all today's troubles and ills. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed night, sisters and brothers.